So, we've got option one. Option two. And then one that I've invented recently. What do you think? I reckon that's going to be safe. I reckon that means that the normal Olympics there's more dope in it than we know about. So with the DJI Osmo Action 5 rumoured to come out soon, at the time of filming this video we still don't know when it's going to be released, the specs. I thought today would be a great opportunity to give you guys a review and an unbiased opinion on this awesome camera, the DJI Osmo Action 4, but more from a cycling user experience capturing all my cycling ventures and all my cycling footage, as opposed to the specs, which there are a million other videos out there. So my opinion, if you can't be bothered watching the rest of the video, this camera will remain an awesome and fantastic action camera for a very long time. And if you're thinking about getting it, or you're thinking about waiting for the DJI Osmo Action 5, which I was considering at one point, I think just get it. And by the time this video gets out, the Osmo Action 5 might already be out. You might get this on discount too. So in this video, I'm gonna try and give you my experience of using it and why I think it's so good. Um, some of the flaws it has and some things that could improve. So one thing I wanna start by saying is I'm an absolute, what we call a pixel peeper. So aside from a sports physio, one other thing I do and I've been doing for a very long time is I film weddings, I film uh, corporate shoots, I film a whole lot of things. So being in that professional environment where people are paying me a lot of money to deliver good quality photos and videos, I'm very sensitive to bad quality video. So for example, if something I see on YouTube isn't quite ideal, I pick it up. Whereas when I'm watching it with someone else, they usually don't pick it up. If there's one thing I've learned from years of years of shooting is that most people don't really, or can't really tell the difference between a good photo and a really, really good photo or a really good video and a really, 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 really good video. Unless of course you do put them side by side. Most people can only tell the difference between watchable and unwatchable footage. And I can tell you for certain that the quality that comes out of this tiny little action camera here is 95% as good as the cameras that I use for weddings. But you know what I can't do with those massive cameras? I can't put it on my bike or fit it in my jersey pocket. So this just speaks for the quality of this camera and for 99% of people and circumstances, it will do just fine. And yes, the next generation will probably have better image quality than this. It probably will have a bigger sensor. But really, how much better do we need it to get? So I'll give you an example. So I bought this camera, the GoPro Hero, I think it was a five black, I think seven or eight years ago, so a lot of time ago. And the other day I watched back at some of the footage that I filmed on this camera. And you know what? For seven or eight years ago, it's it's actually not bad. It's pretty good our quality. And I reckon this, is probably 90% you know, of the way of this. So in eight years, it's gotten much better, but it's not the image quality why I love this camera so much. It's all the other things I'm about to talk about now. So what do I look for in a cycling action camera? So first of all, build quality. So build quality is amazing. Obviously with um, cycling, you're always gonna drop it at some point. You might, you know, pop it out of jersey pocket and it um, it falls onto the ground. Even though I've been pretty careful with it, I've dropped it a few times and pretty much it's unscathed. I can't, well, maybe a couple of scratches, but other than that, the actual screen itself is fantastic. This um, protector on the edge of it, every time it hits the ground, it's gonna hit that and scratch that instead. So build quality is exactly what it should do for an action camera. So what I love about this is the front screen where it, um, you can see yourself when you're riding. So if you want to um, you know, take a selfie or you want to uh, film yourself, it's, uh, it's fantastic for that. Um, that's something I didn't have in my old GoPro. I know this feature is in a lot of other action cameras, but this is the first time I've used it. Another thing I love is it's got three different angles. So it's got ultra wide, wide, and um, what we call, I think standard, which is kind of like your iPhone. And this just gives us a variety of shots. 
Me personally, I don't love the ultra wide angle. It just, for me, it looks a bit weird. Um, I don't really like the distortion, but um, it's a very GoPro looking action camera thing. So steadiness, in an action camera when we're cycling, we want it to be super steady, don't we? Because, you know, shaky footage, it's, it's never gonna look too good. And the DJI Action 4 has this thing called Rocksteady. It's got three levels. It's got Rocksteady, which is your um, steadying it a little bit. Then we've got Rocksteady Plus, steadying it a lot. And then we've got something called Horizontal Balancing, which keeps um, pretty much where, if you're just running along, it just keeps it nice and steady. For me, uh, if you're on a bike, Rocksteady or Rocksteady Plus is enough. Um, it does crop in, so usually my go-to if it's on the front of the bike is just rock steady. If it's on the back of my jersey or if I'm holding it, it could be a rock steady plus. All right, and another reason why I upgraded to this from the GoPro Hero 5, it's got 4K at 50 FPS, which is enough for everyone. Most people watch content on their phones um, and it's enough. For, and 4K is enough for everyone and it's enough to match my other cameras that I use as well. For me, it's got a setting where you can film in four by three. That way I can crop up or crop down. And this is especially helpful when I'm filming behind me and I can't really see what I'm filming. It just gives me a little, little room for error. D-Log M. This is one of the reasons why I bought this over so many of the other, you know, GoPros, Insta360. Um, for those who don't know, D-Log is sort of like a raw format where all the colors are desaturated. And for me, I love this because I'm able to match different cameras um, to look like each other and color grade them the way I want. Maybe that won't be useful to you if you don't um, do much color grading, you don't use different cameras, you just want to document your trip. But it is a point of difference where other cameras don't have. I will say though, just not using D-Log, so just the normal color profile is fantastic in itself. Only use D-Log if you know what you're doing because it's actually a lot more work to color grade and post-process using D-Log. So let's now talk about the mounting system, which for me is an absolute game changer coming from GoPros. Eight years ago when I was um, documenting a lot of my cycling trips and taking a lot of cycling videos, Every time I want to switch between, you know, the selfie stick or the front of the bike, I need to unscrew and screw and it, it took, you know, 20 seconds each time, which you can't really do on the bike, you can't really do at the traffic light, and you probably, you know, so you're probably stuck in one position until you have a break. Then comes this magnetic mount, which slips on, pretty strong magnet, but then it's got this safety system where uh, it clicks on and then bam, it's not going anywhere. It's super quick takes two seconds. I've even done it on the bike before, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, and then you can, yeah, use different mounts. So this is probably my favorite and most versatile for bike because um, you can bite on it, even though a lot of people think it's disgusting. Um, you can use it as a selfie stick. You can, it's less boring. You can get a variety of shots. Other mounts I like to use is on the um, the one on the front of the bike, that usually I use for situations where you know, I'm going really hard, descents, things like that. One other one I've sort of started to use is the back of my jersey. Still haven't perfected that one yet, but um, yeah, that one's good for you know filming people's faces, just make sure it doesn't fall out. And the last one is audio. So the audio on the Action 4 was already pretty good. Usually I hate audio that comes out of the camera, even that camera there I have to use external microphone or even a shotgun mic. Um, but even on the bike when there's a lot of wind, you can actually hear what's going on and it's and it's pretty good. It's like 22 degrees but it basically feels like Melbourne summer. We are not dressed well. Even better, you can attach the DJI Mic 2, which automatically connects to this, which is a fantastic function. Uh, especially if you want to do things like vlog and use these this camera for other things, which you certainly can. And people have made huge channels vlogging with just this camera. Me, I've already got these Rode mics. One day I will get the mic too, but I just can't justify it just yet. So that's the package and that's why I love this as a cycling camera. One thing it's not very good at is low light. So for sure, this sensor is quite small um, compared to what I'm filming on right now. So the image in low light will never be as good. And as I said at the start of the video, being a pixel peeper, lighting is extremely important. The more ideal lighting you have, it doesn't matter what camera you have, the image is gonna look better. But a lot of times um, you're gonna be filming in unideal situations and this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna cut it. Things like in the dark, 
um, when it's really shadowy, so when you're going through um, patches of dark light, dark light, that's when it isn't quite that good. But to be fair, usually when I'm cycling, I'm cycling during the day when lighting is good and I'm gonna choose to film in a direction where the light is favorable. Usually the sun hitting me from an angle or whatever the subject is, as opposed to backlit. So those are the reasons why I absolutely love this camera. It is pretty much the package and I don't think I'll need to upgrade for a long time right, until I find a reason to. But it all depends on what you're using it for. I think this is something perfect for like documenting your cycling trips and adventure videos, vlogging, things that you just want a camera conveniently there, shoot it, it's, you know, you don't have to worry too much about damaging it, chuck it in your bag, you know, it's, it's perfect for that. And I have a rule of thumb that whenever I'm filming, I use the best camera I have at that time. And I think this rule came from, I feel like it was Casey Neistat who said that and it just stuck with me. And most of the time when I'm on the bike, this is the best camera I have. Yes, I can use my phone, but it's just not convenient. I could drop it. You can't mount your phone. You know, this is the best camera I have when I'm cycling. So in summary, I think you should definitely get it. I am actually interested in what the Action 5 will come out with um, and how much better it will be than this. But I think for you guys watching this video, you won't be disappointed in this. It's quite future-proof. So I think for many years to come, the quality that coming that's coming out of this will be very good. And maybe the good news is when the Action 5 does eventually come out, this will come on sale. It's already cheap in the GoPro and it's priced very competitively compared to alternatives. But you can probably pick this up for even cheaper. And I think this is an absolute beast for what it is and you definitely won't be disappointed. Hope you got something out of that video and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.